Who out there knew you could stand silent in front of a judge? I didn't. I, I had never heard of anything like that. I thought you had to have a uh, guilty or not guilty plea. But uh, this guy, Brian Coburn, man, he, he kind of knew what he was doing. He stood silent. I had no idea why he did that. But many people out there, especially even mainstream media, would say things like, um, that move was disrespectful to the victim. But please re recognize the implications of that move. By standing silent, he preserved the right to contest his indictment. And to be honest, that small move does make him smarter than a lot of people out there. He also requested a story, uh, I'm sorry, a stay in proceedings so he can garner all grand jury materials. He's not quite rotting away in prison just yet. On a side note, it sounds like BF may be part of the exculpatory evidence. But everybody needs to chill on this, dude. This case doesn't need any more peripheral fog. Why would anyone want to muddy the waters when they are so sure the evidence is solid? Just so you know, the types of activities and motions of, this, of his defense team are normal for a case of this magnitude. Please stop with use, useless pieces of information like his employment. I recently heard BK's employment at a meatpacker and fish cutter are significant parts of his profile. It doesn't take a genius to know that carving up a fish is a lot different than murdering a human being. This is becoming a clown show. Let me list what I've learned from both mainstream media and some true crime channels. This is what I call mud. Anyone who majors in criminal justice will one day use that information to murder people. Anyone who works out at night is a murderer. Anyone who times their runs is a murderer. Anyone who visits a neighboring town is a murderer. Anyone who visits at night is an even bigger murderer. Anyone who has a white car is a murderer. Anyone who tries to use the advantages of that criminal justice system is a murderer. <laughs> a couple more. Uh, anyone who applies for a security or law enforcement job is a murderer. Anyone who is labeled as an incel is a murderer. Anyone who had hopes of becoming an army ranger is a murderer. Anyone who can be content with themselves or is capable of spending quiet time alone is a murderer. And that's not even scratching the surface. I asked myself, what are some things that would make me that would change my mind. What are, what are some key pieces of evidence? Um, Mur Murphy hair won't change my mind. Um, I don't think that a little dog hair would change my mind. You could find that on his clothes, you could find that in the car, and you could find that in his apartment, and I still wouldn't, I still wouldn't see that as an important piece of evidence. Here's why. Uh, it, it does occur to me that People frequented this house quite often, going in and out and having parties. This is not odd for a college apartment or dorm or house, especially a sorority house. And we do have some of the police cams, the body cams, of when they go to that house because of a noise complaint. There's at least three or four that I've, I've analyzed in the, fa in the past um, couple of days. And there's even one where not one resident of the house was there. They had gone to a different party. But the people at that house were still partying without the residents there. So it's very easy for somebody to party in some of these locations, right? And maybe not too many people would have known who he was coming in and out, drinking, having fun. It's very, I mean, one dog hair gets on your shoe and you go home because of a night of partying. That does not make you a murderer. If this house was locked down like a castle, I would say, okay, that's interesting. Murphy hair is interesting. That might lead me to something else. But since it's party atmosphere, it's pretty open atmosphere, hey, let's party, let's have fun, and one little dog hair, well, I'm sure it's not a shedder, but one dog hair does not make this case. It would not change my mind at all. Um his blood at the scene or their blood in his vehicle would change my mind. 
even if a little tiny hair fell off and got stuck in a pool of blood and cops came by and said, oh, there's there's a little hair in there. And they analyzed that and said, that might be this guy Koberger. I would be that would be pretty decent evidence. I mean, the, the hair could have gotten in there at any time, right? He could have been partying and hair falls out. He could have the girl's hair on him if he did party in that house. I mean, there's going to be things floating around in the atmosphere. And he could have brushed up against somebody. He might, might even be with somebody in that house. He's, he could potentially have hair on him. I know girls shed <laughs> a lot. Um, I'm always cleaning out the drain, right? Um, but... Um, that does not make me change my mind. Hair from him in a pool of blood would change my mind. And I think uh, any type of, obviously, any type of his blood at the scene, yes, that would change my mind. Any, any blood from those, uh, the victims in his vehicle or apartment or on his clothes, yes, that would change my mind. And I'm under the assumption that this was a fight. I'm under, I'm under the assumption that this was not just something that, like, some silent ninja walked in there. I'm under the assumption that there were some defensive wounds on some of the victims. What's one thing that victims love to do, especially if they got nails in their female? They like to go, and just rip people's, you know? And they're going to have DNA underneath their finger, fingernails. That could change my mind as well. But 12 skin cells on a sheath does not change my mind. Blurry image of a car does not change my mind. A PhD in criminal justice running at night, running during the day, visiting a nearby campus, going 12 times to this nearby campus, and 11 of those times occurred at night. Oh, it's a party house. What time do you think the party starts? Noon? That's a lot of drinking. I mean, he's going to go at night. Even, <coughs> could even be... <coughs> I don't know this kid, and I, and I have friends that were top-of-the-line students and still did a lot of drugs and still carried on with a great life. So I'm sure it can happen out there. And if this person is a druggie and a PhD, he might have even been scoring drugs at those hours. Again, he could have also been doing some reconnaissance, but he's not... I don't think, I don't think he understands the tenets of reconnaissance it's, it, you're not supposed to be seen. You, 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 no matter what, if, if you can't get the information, don't push it any further in a reconnaissance, just don't be seen. So he gives himself up if those are reconnaissance positions because it occurred um, while he had his, his cell phone with him supposedly being picked up by nearby towers. You don't want to be seen when you're doing a reconnaissance, so you wouldn't bring your phone or drive your own car. That would be kind of dumb. Uh, it's, it's more along the lines of he went there to have a good time and potentially combined that good time with a reconnaissance. Um, but going 11 times at night, is not a big deal because he's probably hooking up with drugs, friends, or, you know, partying because parties don't start at 3 PM. Uh, moving right along. The evidence that you and I have seen so far is subpar and you know it. If better evidence is being withheld until trial, then I will change my perspective. But so far, it's flimsy, and no one except maybe the grand jury or prosecution team has seen this evidence, if it exists at all. Now, I'm talking about a clear picture of his car, a clear picture of his license plate. They got them all through Colorado. You'll get a picture sent to you, to you in the mail. And it's a clear, it's clear, it reads your license plate. Um, so without that technology, without that ability, just a normal old raggedy ass camera, just, you know, pointing down at a vehicle as it speeds by, it gets like five frames per second. So not doing a lot of good. Um, and if it doesn't, if they don't have that clarity, then I don't believe that this, uh, this person did it. Um, this is why people are throwing in the most circumstantial nonsense. They judged BK on day one, as did I, and they are too proud to admit that this case is not a home run. This evidence is weak. I will admit I'm wrong if the trial presents clear evidence, but until then, none of us have actually seen any real evidence, but more importantly, who else could have been involved? The victims need justice, but uh, has that already been taken care of by SWAT? 